Um, I want to talk a bit about the future of theater. Mm. Mm. <laughs> what does that mean? Because mm, I don't know whether it has one. <laughs> Why do you say that? I think storytelling will be, will, will, will be permanent. I don't think the form that we're used to or what we think is theater will. I don't think it can, not in its present stage. You mean people sitting in the dark facing one way, facing a lighted stage with actors acting? Well, there's the problem right there. Most people that do that now will sit at home with a DVD. Right. And the generation that did that, you know, it's, I'm, I'm just bringing out cliches, of course, at this point, and old adages. They're, they're dying. They're not, you know, that's what's happening in the theaters. They're just, they're, they're, the audiences aren't being replaced. We have a whole different uh, way of looking at art. You know, maybe we've lost looking at art. I don't know, but I know personally, I would rather stay at home watching a DVD that I really like to watch in the comfort of my own home with my family. You know, I don't want to have to go downtown and let's say go to a big theater and spend 130 bucks a ticket, transportation to get there, parking to get there, food to eat or go to Stratford for a weekend, you're dropping a couple of thousand dollars if you've got a family of three or four. If you're going to stay there, get there, eat there. So do you see a future for it, a different kind of future for it? It has to be different. It absolutely has to be different. Any ideas? Yeah. I, I think that, I've talked to a few people about it. I think it has to be, uh, since people don't want to go to the theater anymore other than it's for its prestige, the money people will still, I think, want to be involved in the community of theater and the arts in general, whether that's opera, dance. But generally speaking, other people will want theater in their home. Salon theater, I think, has to exist. It has to come into an effective form. That's what Claire Coulter was doing. Yeah, and, I, and that's, what's, that's what trig twig twigged it to me because when we live in this semi on the East End, our next door neighbors had Claire over. And they invited us over. And here she was sitting in a little chair in my neighbor's room. And it was brilliant, like 18, 20 people or more sitting around listening to Clara's story. And I said, this is it. Bring the art home. Right. Or have salon theater, like, you know, you have a, or a whole series of one-person shows or duets or whatever, integrate it with music, integrate it with dance, do it like the masks, the traditional masks of the past, but bring it to the home in some form or other. I think it's the only way you know that it can go because otherwise, fewer and fewer of us are willing to go outside the door. Right, and why is that? We're tired. We're older. We're working too hard. We don't have the money. All that. I don't have the time. My children. Blah 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 blah. Yeah, but it's not really special. I think, and I think when you bring it to someone's home, it becomes special. It becomes unique. But when they go to see Lion King, they're going to see something special. That's an event. Yeah. That's an event. But when they go to the Tarragon. They're not going to an event. Unless it's agreed upon that it is. Like the word of mouth says, okay, it's you got to go because it's fashionable to go. Right. Mm -hmm. In terms of the live performance element of theater, mm -hmm. I would choose to go to the theater because it's a live performance. If I watch a hockey game on television, even a widescreen thing in my bar, mm -hmm. that's one experience. If I go to the ACC or, or Winnipeg or whatever and I see a live hockey game or even see the Marlies, it is a very different visceral experience for me, and I know which one I choose. Yeah, but then I you're talking about sports. There's a big difference. Which is? Between going to a theater and going to sports, massive difference. You mean we don't know who's going to win? No, it's, it's more gladiatorial. I mean, right. It's a blood sport. It's, it's somehow we're conditioned to accept that culturally as opposed to we're not conditioned to accept theater culturally. But wait a minute, I go to a game, I know there's going to be five on that side, five on that side, mm -hmm. they're going to do that a whole lot, and after 60 minutes, uh, it's going to be three pucks in that neck, one in that. I know it's not going to be much different. They're not going to play sideways. They're not going to change costume. Mm -hmm. They're not going to suddenly come up with... It's quite predictable, and it's form hockey, mm -hmm. and yet I will viscerally engage, especially in the live in the live thing because there's a feeling in the building when my team scores and I leap to my feet, I can't buy that anywhere else. Well, you Why know, I, isn't that in the theater? I, I accept that because I don't know. I said, wouldn't it be great if we had the same response to theater? But you're an artist going to a sports event that you appreciate. Right. 
you don't have a lot of people coming from sports going to the theater and appreciating it the same way. And that's the massive difference in our culture. We are sports oriented. We are culturally, genetically almost, predisposed to go to sports as opposed to go to the theater. And until that changes, we're going to have the same continuing problem. Is it a societal thing in that I'm sure you've had the experience, and I had, you know, either you and the Mikado or Gary Reinecke shucking corn oh, in yes. Buried Child. Oh, yes. A moment, or John Colicos in King Lear, or Heath Lambert's doing One for the Pot, oh, yes. you rise out of your seat as you watch that performance, much as I will watch a brilliant play in hockey, and I will never, ever, ever forget Gary Reinecke shucking corn and what that did to me viscerally, yeah. like any great NHL hockey game. So they are similar in a way. I, I think you're similar in a way, in the sense that you went to both events and saw that they are similar. I'm just saying that the general public doesn't have that perception. They used to. I think there are more, of, more people that were culturally uh, connected right. than that. I think we've lost that. We're losing it. You know, and I think we're fighting a, fighting ba a losing battle. And yet, if the cast of CSI Miami turned up on Young Street, there would be crowds for days. Yeah, but the cats cast of Da Vinci's Inquest. <laughs> no. Okay, I'm just that that yeah, that's part of a cultural thing. I mean, yeah. I can't stand CSI uh, Miami, and I can't stand most of the performers in it because they've degraded storytelling to such a level. And I'm sure they've all got to make yeah. livings, but they have degraded everything that we've been talking about to such a level. And yet, it has the excitement of the attractability of, of yeah. NHL hockey stars. So well, That goes back to culture too in yeah. the sense that we're dumbed down like yeah. in the last 20 years we are so dumbed down man it's incredible. We've been just... And how do we work against that, resist that, rebalance that? How do we do that? I don't know. I wish I knew. I wish I knew. I, I, don't, I don't mean to be a pessimist about it. I think it has to be reinvented. It has to be interesting. The, the essence of storytelling is where it lies. It always has. A good story, people will be attracted to that. Kim's Convenience, for instance, it's also culturally connected. Yes. It's very much in tune with who we are, where we are, and what we are now. Yep. And to me, that's brilliant. And now it's touring. It's broke all, it broke all the records. So some, somebody's saying, you know what? You're writing a story that we can get. And we like. Because you're talking to our hearts and minds, you know, in 2000. Whatever. So you're saying Hamlet is a story that we can't get, that we can't connect to? Inexpressible Island is a story that we can't, or? I, I think, as you're going down that list there, I think Kim's, yes. Hamlet's still, yes. Inexpressible, I don't think so. I don't know why. I'd like to see it done again, but no. I think Hamlet will always, it's, its story and its humanity and its, mm -hmm. his quirkiness will always connect to the youth. Right. Always to the youth.